analytics tools. Uh, are any of you guys intimidated by Google Analytics when you go in there? You, well, let's say, let me rephrase that. You set up Google Analytics on your site. You put in the tracking script. You know it's on all your pages. Maybe you put in the header like you should. Maybe you put in the footer like you thought you should. Uh, but in reality, you did that, and maybe you added a goal or two, and that's the extent of it. Is that pretty much how it goes for everybody? You know, when, when you go in there, you, you think, all right, I've, I've done the basic setup. I'm going to start going through all this data, but now I have to try and make sense of it. But the problem with the analytics is, much like pay-per-click, you're scared to go through and start tweaking things because you might break it. And there's data that you lose that you can't get back, and that's really intimidating. So uh, when we were trying to track a lot of uh, advanced things uh, on our own website, and when we have these, um, you know, these schema creators and, and the tool that I'm going to show you, um, these microsites, I don't want to have to go to three different Google Analytics profiles. I want to be able to do cross-domain tracking and see all the traffic in one profile. I'm sure a lot of your clients who do microsites, are, they run into that same uh, problem, but we don't know how to do it. And if you go to the Google uh, Help Index, Jesus Christ, they keep things from like 2006. And so you go there and are like, all right, well, there's 10 different ways for me to implement this. I have absolutely no idea which one's right. And they talk to you as if you were one of the founders of Google Analytics who did all the back-end coding, and you have any idea how to track that, especially if you do the social tracking. Uh, you know how they have plus one in GA now? If you try and do it on Twitter and Facebook, if you just look at that help page, it's disgusting. You, you're like, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, even if you have a little bit of a developer background. And so this is the problem I was running into, and everybody, all the analytics blogs out there, they all have these great ideas on how they would implement it, and they're all different. And they're all different from the help index. And so I just was fed up. And I was like, I just want to know the one way to do it that'll work. I don't need to know something fancy. I just need to know that it's not going to break anything. And so I, I created GA config. Uh, and it's a free tool out there. And there's 17 different configuration options. Uh, I think most of them are around events. So coming up with, you know, uh, tracking Facebook uh, shares and, and, and tweets. and um, But doing some cross-domain tracking or multiple domains with subdomains. I mean, there's a lot of variations. Uh, it's doing something simple like tracking 404 pages so that you can find out links that are going there. So you can, you know, if you, what's really cool if you do, if you track your 404 pages in Google Analytics and, and you segment by it, you see, all right, we've had, you know, say 100 visitors to there, you can see the referrals. And I can say, oh, well, we have all these links that are just pointing to our 404 page that we're not taking advantage of. So then you can benefit from that from an SEO perspective in addition to improving the user's experience. So. Uh, you go here, all you need to know is your Google Analytics account number. Hopefully you know the site that you're working on. And then uh, whether you're using the traditional GA.js or the async setup, uh, most people I assume would be using the async setup. And so just with three clicks of a button, we tell you the code that you need, where you need to put it. You don't have to worry about privacy because it doesn't save any information. It's just a straight up free tool for you to use to make that process easier. So uh, hopefully you guys will try it. I was really happy when we got it out there. I'm going to keep improving it. Uh, I have a lot of ideas. I want to have, you know, a, regis, a regular expression checker. Uh, I want to have a way to crawl your site and tell you if you're missing tags anywhere. Um, I was telling Aaron when I, uh, I was at Affiliate Summit doing a SEO audit panel, and there was somebody there who, like, we, we don't get traffic to anywhere but our homepage. And I was like, that's weird. So I started looking at, at their, at their uh, code, and I'm like, you don't have Google Analytics on any page but your homepage. <laughs> but the sad thing is they had like two years worth of blog posts there. And I'm like, are you, so every, you know, let's say you look at it every month. Every month you log in and you're like, man, nobody likes any other page on our site but our homepage. This is bizarre. And we're writing to nobody. And you see blog comments there, but you're still not putting that together. So, uh, <laughs> well, so this tool, hopefully we'll, we'll have that. I know there are other tools out there, but again, kind of consolidating that. So give it a try if you have recommendations. There's a uh, feedback button at the bottom that goes directly to me. I'd love to know what other things you want to configure uh, to make your life a little bit easier. But what I have found that the problem with marketers when it comes to analytics, and this is the same thing that I said before, is we're not creative enough. So we know what to look for. We know we want to look at goal completions. We know we just want to see, all right, well, what is our, our balance rate for this specific page? We're looking at the basic engagement metrics. But the problem that we have is we don't start asking questions. So we see a goal completion. I see that you know everybody's coming to the Raven Tools homepage, and let's say you know 20% of them go through and sign up. But I'm not asking myself why. Why is 20% signing up on X product page and only 5% on this other one? What is different about them? And that's what we are failing to do. And you can really get a good hypothesis around what's causing that just by looking at this. So then you can move on to something like, 
website optimizer and start testing what variations you want. But you need to start coming up with these questions so that you know how you can improve on everything. It will really help you from an SEO perspective because I have to believe you guys also agree that Google is looking at what they're doing on your site. I mean, you have Google Analytics on your site. They came through. You have plus one buttons everywhere. I mean, they, they know exactly what people are doing on your site. And when somebody clicks through to it and they're not doing anything but leaving, they know that it's not that relevant. You're going to start to see drops in your rankings and ideally your traffic. And that's also a question that we get asked a lot is what we think about rankings, uh, especially with how much they've changed recently. Um, you know, you have uh, Google Plus just destroying them, and then you have just Universal in general. I mean, nothing is ever the same. You know, Aaron was, and I were talking about, you, you know, you said that, you know, you'll, you'll look at local. Sometimes it's up here, sometimes it's, you know, over here on the side, sometimes it's just a couple of them are injected in the middle. You never see the same thing twice. Like you said, sometimes even on the same day. And that will drive you crazy. And I think what you're going to see with a lot of the rank checkers out there is it's going to be harder and harder for them to keep track of this. Not just from a logistical standpoint, like it's really hard to make sure that you're updating it once a day and giving an accurate number. I think Google's going to make it even harder for them to keep track of. Because they've always said, well, they haven't always said, that's the horrible thing about it. They used to give everyone free, you know, you could apply for an API access to that. That's how Raven started tracking rankings. We applied for it. They said, all right, you know, you, you know, we reviewed your site. You guys can have access to the API. You can actually check the rankings. We knew they'd be accurate. We became one of the bigger rank checkers out there. And then they're like, no, nope, taking it away. We know you just built, you know, this great tool. You've been invested tons of hours in and stuff. Uh, and, and so what they're trying to do is squash that. And so... You all need to be prepared for the day where you, your rankings are even more inaccurate than they are now, and you really can't go by them. And I'm hoping that you're already focusing on analytics, you're looking at the social interactions, you're just looking at engagement as a whole, and this is more of a measurement tool. You're looking for you know, red flags. Uh, you want to see if you made a big change, if, if it did have an impact, but just not relying on this. Like we see a lot of people say, they say they want daily rankings, and I'm just like, you don't need to look at it daily. We pull them weekly, that's... I mean, even if you're looking at them weekly, I mean, that's, that's plenty. And so hopefully you guys are, are going to migrate towards that as well. Um, but a few tips for maximizing your analytics value. Uh, if, you, if you recall, in Google Analytics, they actually give you categories for your goals. So take advantage of that. Actually organize your goals um, by category. So just a couple of recommendations. You could have your general ones, so the ones that basically do your, your typical conversion. You can have your transactional ones, so if you want to look at your cost per transaction. Not all of these are goals that you would actually end up setting up in Google Analytics, but as a whole, everybody agrees that these are the goals that we're tracking, and then you need to come to, together and decide the best way, you know, what numbers you want, to be, you want to be targeting, because you can get this data in Google Analytics if you set it up right. And, uh, you know, when it comes to, a, I, I spoke uh, about website redesign, so if you go through the whole website redesign process, which is the most painful process anybody could ever go through, um, because everybody has an idea what it wants, to, what you want it to look like, what they want it to do. It's just a mess, and nothing ever gets done. Um, this is one of the first steps you guys should all be agreeing on. If you are going through that process, hopefully everybody's on the same page at your company, your clients are on the same page. But making sure that you are looking at more than just you know your traditional goal 